let's talk about the CM Punk thing. Uh, Dave, yeah. uh, on Friday morning, The Observer comes out. And, you know, Friday morning is really like aggregation morning for, for a lot of websites like that. Like all, like I wake up before I've even read The Observer. There's like five stories that, that are out based on The Observer. And, you know, some of the other really good websites that have good reporting, like uh, Fightful, that they, they, they have that that happens on their website, too. But, man, I just saw this story everywhere. Like I jumped on Twitter and like one of the trending things was like CM Punk buyout. And I was like, what's going on here? And then I yeah. realized it was Dave's story. Now, I'm, I'm a little, I guess I'm not surprised because this happens in real sports all the time. You know, in the NBA, when it comes down to the end of the season, you know, teams will buy players out. Uh, you know, Russell Westbrook may get bought out this year because he's be playing terribly for the Lakers. But ultimately, it's a way for Punk and AEW to shake hands on an agreement and say, OK, we don't need you. You don't need us. We'll come to some monetary agreement, 50 cents on the dollar, whatever it is. And you, we can go our separate ways. And the key is how soon until he would be able to show up in WWE yeah. if that's what his goal was. Because that's what AEW is. Uh, th that's what they are protecting against is just him taking all of his, you know, all of the goodness that he did for their company, and just going right into WWE and, and bashing them on that show and, hey, and all that. You know what I just did? You know what I what? just did right now? I just messaged what? someone over at WWE and I point blank asked them, can you tell me if you guys are interested in punk, if he's a, if he's free to come over? Would love an answer by five o'clock. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So we have some so breaking news here. Well, maybe you know might. Maybe we won't. Maybe they'll tell me to go F myself. I don't know. No, I think the <laughs> punk situation. I mean, most likely they will. Uh, the punk situation is, is you know, I, I, I Matt, my producer, just reminded me I did an entire segment on this. I totally forgot about it. But my, my kind of my point here was, you know, would he gets bought out, right? They buy his contract out of whatever. He's out for the next X amount of months. So how long of a non-compete will he have? Yeah. Is it the extent of his injury? Is it going to be the extent of his contract? Because essentially, I'm assuming that's what they want to do is buy him out for the remainder of the contract and have him sit at home till 2020, whatever. Right. But, you know, that those are very difficult to fight uh, in court. It, people have lost, especially, you know, you, preventing someone from working or making more money. So I don't know if Punk wants to do that. But what are his opportunities to go anywhere in wrestling right now? You know, who, where, who could afford him? Obviously, we know the answer. Mm -hmm. And do, would they want him? Yeah. We don't know that answer. AEW could just ice him and pay him his money uh, as as his contract for as, for as long as his contract goes. Yeah. And also, and remember, he was hurt for a while. Yeah, theoretically, so, he's got a, an injury that they could add time to if they mm -hmm. wanted. I'm sure that is in, in the language of their contract. So for Punk, I think... He may he will have to give up some of his leverage here in order for them to agree to, to do this because the, the ball is like all the leverage should kind of be in their hands because they have him under contract. And so he's going to have to give something up. Uh, and then the flip side is also going to WWE. And I don't know what what if what if he was like, yeah, let's let's call it halvesies and, and I'll sit out for a year. Or, you know, I'll take less and you let me out earlier and I can show and I can sign a contract with WWE, you know, sooner than later. Like there, there's got to be balls bouncing back and forth in in that way. I'm sure uh, when it comes to this sure. stuff. So, yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a fascinating thing because now you're talking about leverage and negotiations and yeah, non how easy agreements, all that. Yeah. Stuff, and, right. And and how easy is punk to negotiate with how easy is tony khan to negotiate with are they both sharks in this negotiation uh remember like back in the day brock lesnar tried to get out of his wwe deal and they were like well if you go play football you're fine but if you go do yeah. anything else like we we have you right japan and, <laughs> yeah 
And then they just. But do you remember they, they figured it out? And then and they, they came signed to an him. agreement and later. Then, yeah. And then they announced that the, he was in. Do you remember that weird WWE.com exclusive where oh, yeah. Brock Lesnar and Sable are at the WWE headquarters, and then it went nowhere. Yeah. So I guess yeah. they thought they had him, and they were gonna. He was coming back, and whatever happened after that meeting, <laughs> kind of fell apart. I think for for Punk's, you know. Some may say he, you know, does he have more value now than he did when he first debuted? I think so. I think you no think matter so where he goes, people are going to, I think for a hundred percent for WWE. Yeah. I, 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 listen, it's a never say never business, right? Bret Hart has been MFing Goldberg for the last 22 <laughs> years. Yeah. Is he trying to set up and, a match? What's going on here? I mean, he's working an angle for sure. I don't know to what, but he, I, you know, He's in WWE. He said he, the things he said about Sean and Vince, you know, Ultimate Warriors, another one, the, the heinous things that he said. Hogan was another one. The, the, the list goes is endless, really. Yeah. There, there's yeah. really nobody that Vince wouldn't have brought back. And, you know, in knowing people that work with Hunter closely, he's a he's a product of that philosophy, business first, personal issues second. I mean, what does that do to your business? What does that mean for business? If you happen to grab a CM Punk you know, after whatever, in a year from now, you know, what kind of value does that bring your brand? How would you want it? WWE is far more controlled of an environment than AEW is. Uh, I, I, there are many things put in place and it, that, that's not a knock at AEW it just has to do with the maturity point of the company. One is a three-year-old company. Another one is a 50-year-old company or so. Mm -hmm. So you, you have, you have things in place to prevent these things from happening. I, I, I'm also, you know, my, my whole point here is, you know, he, this guy at the last scrum he was at sat there and he cried that Tony Khan is in possession of his career with Ring of Honor. And that thank God that someone like Tony Khan has the archives and has yeah. has his career because he'll do right by the archives. Right. He'll do right by guys like Danielson and Claudio and Punk and whoever else was in the early days of Ring of Honor. I think everybody knows that it's safe in his hands. But to go from that to, you know, essentially sitting next to your boss, burying him publicly, essentially what you told everybody is that he is incompetent at managing the talent. The talent is incompetent. This entire company is incompetent. And he's the only one with good advice and the only one that has a good head on his shoulders. I mean, we saw how that played out, didn't we? Yeah. Like, so, and you what like i don't know man uh, punk is, is is straight edge obviously he's his he's very well known to but when he was saying that i i, I in my mind i was like i if it was somebody else i would have thought this guy have a couple of beers before he no, went on this he, thing he, right he was but hot. Punk is he looked <laughs> the eyes man the eye I, yeah. I, that's why i thought it was kind of a work at first when i'm watching i'm like he's really like what are you going to get out of this yeah what are you getting at? I mean, the fact that we're still talking about it still says a lot, right? But I mean, well, it's listen, because AEW day, won't talk about it. That's why we don't have any answers. Nobody, yeah, AEW's not talking about it. I, yeah. I think at the end of the day, money's going to be a big driver of this. And if you're CM Punk and a WWE comes knocking and they throw, you know, five million, six, million, I don't know, I'm throwing a number. You're gonna have to think about it. You're you're in in your forties. This is the end. This is the end of your run. Do you want to leave the industry with this? WWE do a great job in making you forget anything bad happened over there. Yeah. Here's Obviously, a question. you want to end your career on a positive. So we know how Punk left WWE because in the now deleted podcast, he kind of told us the, you know, how it ended. And the idea was, uh, wasn't it supposed to be him versus Triple H at WrestleMania or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And and so we know that his relationship with, with Triple H was probably not fantastic. Um him going back there, can they I, I, I would imagine that Triple H is going to do whatever it takes to win over fans at this point, and that may be bringing in CM Punk. I don't know how much of the nice guy punk stuff w was really true in in aew i'm sure some of it was and i'm sure i'm sure some people I'm, some people I'm, probably I'm thought it was yeah yeah I i'm so, positive some, it some was people who know him best you know probably was like oh yeah you know this is only gonna last for so long or something but you know the person i would love to ask 
is someone who probably knows him really well. If you could give him and and Brian Danielson, he always generally tells the truth, so we wouldn't even have to give him truth serum. We just have to get him to to talk. But I wonder what he thinks about this whole thing because he knows, you know, him and Samoa Joe probably know Punk the best out of out of any talent about you know, if they would have thought that this was going to be the end result or whatever. But anyway, my, I guess my, my question for you is, does Triple H just go, you know what, clean slate, we're bringing you back, you're a giant star, you're going to be in the mix, it's you and Roman, it's you and Cody, or do you think Triple H is like, man, this guy caused me a lot of grief. This guy caused this company a lot of grief. Do we really want to I, do business with this guy again? I would, I, I'm if if I was a betting man, which I'm not, sometimes and I end up losing, uh, I, would, I, I would say that he's thinking, what is the best positioning for our brand? What is the worst positioning for AEW? How can we turn this around? Uh, you know, as far as the optics of, of, there's that word, right? There's that word, uh, I love it. The optics of, you know, the legacy of CM Punk. There's so much money to be made. And that's, that's what it really comes down to. The merch, the toys, the video game, the, you know, the, the Peacock special of him showing up wherever, however he shows up the 24 in the life of, you know, and Fox, Fox wanted him. Uh, I mean, that is not a question in USA, obviously, uh, you know, put position that they would have loved to have him. I, there's nobody as far as the networks go, they want him. They know that he is a draw. He did make money for this company. It was a, a great, you know, for WWE, they kind of saw that this guy is drawing, you know, and he can make money for the company. And there's not too many of those guys left in the business. Mm -hmm. And he's someone that will not go back to AEW. I mean, if this is all happening, right? Uh, he's not going to go back there. He's on bad terms with them. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> do you think, do you think they would play hardball with Punk a little bit business-wise just because, like you just said, if he's leaving AEW and he's getting bought out by AEW, there's no one to negotiate against. It's basically WWE or he's he's gone again. And so I wonder going, how impact? Right. I wonder how hard they would negotiate with him when it came to that, just knowing that the competition is literally not there for, for oh. him to bargain, you know, to bargain up. So so here's the other side, right? If you're AEW. And if you know, right, that WWE will take him after after he's clear to go, after whatever agreement you do, how does that affect your negotiation in this? Do you start second guessing? Yeah. Yeah. Do you try 100%. to put him on ice even longer. Do you get more aggressive with, you know, preventing him from going there? These are all things that are going to come into play. It's not it's not this cut and dry decision because the this one decision will impact wrestling no pun intended, for the next five years or so.